Okay, um, this video is for geometry. We do have a quest on Thursday or Friday covering um, 8.1 through 8.4. So here are some questions that help you with this. Uh, number one. So a painter leans a 15-foot ladder against the house. The base of the ladder is 5 feet from the house. To the nearest tenth of a foot, how high on the house does the ladder reach? Okay, so do we need a little picture here? Okay, um, here is the house. Here's the ground. Okay, so we have this ladder leaning on a house. There's my ladder. And it says the ladder is 15 feet. So this is 15 feet. It says the base of the ladder is 5 feet from the house. So this is 5 feet. And they want to know to the nearest tenth of a foot, how high up does the ladder reach? Okay. Here's my right angle. I'm given two of the three sides. This is a Pythagorean theorem problem. Pythagorean theorem, which is, of course, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay? So, we take a look at this. Uh, we need to label the three sides. Um, the hypotenuse across the right angle is always c. 5 and x can be interchangeable. Let's like 5 bb and let's let x be a. So, we have x squared plus 5 squared equals 15 squared. Okay, um, and we're going to square the things, so x squared plus 25 equals 225, sorry, excuse me, 225. Let's subtract 25 from both sides, x squared is equal to 200. And now the question says to the nearest tenth, so it does mean round. So uh, we're going to do this problem twice. So we are going to use our calculator, so what is x? So when I do the square root of 200 square root of 200. Uh, I do get 14.1 and that's going to be in feet. Remember to answer your problems, uh, your word problems with units. But now let's take 200 over here and let's talk about breaking it down radically because there might be some problems like that as well. So we need the perfect square factors that go into 200. Well 200 is 2 times 100. That's the easiest way to break it down because 10 squared is 100. And that's a perfect square. 2 is broken down as far as it can go. So I have to circle the 2 so that I keep the 200's original identity because 2 times 10 squared is still 200. And now if I was to simplify this radically, inside the radical I'd put 2 times 10 squared. The 10 would come out because it is squared and the 2 would stay inside. And that's also equal to 14.1. So again, follow the directions. Round when it says round. Simplify radically when it says simplify radically. Uh, the latter problem. Two. For each pair of numbers, find a third whole number such that the three numbers form a Pythagorean triple. So they give you two of the three sides. So options could be um, option one. They could give you the two legs. Or option two one leg, and the hypotenuse. Now, when the numbers are spread out like this, I'm going to suggest that maybe the 85 is the hypotenuse. So let's go with way number two first. So let's say, okay, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's say that 13 is a leg and 85 is the hypotenuse. So that would mean that 13 is the leg, so let's let it be a or b. Let's let it be b. So a squared plus 13 squared, and now we're going to let the hypotenuse be 85. Okay, so we're trying way number 2 right here. And we're going to see if A comes out to be a whole number. Notice this right here. It says find a third whole number, because a Pythagorean triple has to be three whole numbers. So we square A squared plus 169 equals 7, 2, 2, 5. We subtract 169 a squared equals 7056, and I take a square root. And when I take the square root of 7056, I get 84. And my hunch was correct that since one number was way smaller than the other, that this was a leg and a hypotenuse, that means the third side is 84. And then 13... 84 and 85 make the Pythagorean triple. Okay. All right, Pythagorean theorem. 
beware. All right, number three. Find the value of each variable. Express in simplest radical form. So we look at this picture. It's rather complicated. I see a right angle, and I see a 45 degree angle and a 30 degree angle. And I think, oh, this is special right triangles. 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90. Special right triangles. So if this is 45 right here, so is this. And if this is 30 right here, that makes this 60. And we have a 45, 45, 90, here's the 90 degrees on the left, and a 30, 60, 90 on the right. Now, the number given, 7 radical 2, is on the triangle on the left, so let's start with the triangle on the left first, which is the 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. 7 radical 2 here, C here, and a there. And since this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we're going to label it three ways, S, S, and S radical 2. Uh, we are given S radical 2. S radical 2 is equal to 7 radical 2. To get back to S, we divide by radical 2, divide by radical 2, S equals, and since the 7 has a radical 2 with it, they cancel. S is 7. Pretty simple. So that means that a is 7, and C is also 7, because both of those are the legs of the 45, 45, 90. They are S's. And now, we take A, since it is shared by both, and we create the 30, 60, 90 triangle over here. So we are 60 degree up here, right angle, 30 degree here. This is 7A, which is shared by both. This is then B, that's D, 30, 60, 90. We need to label the three sides. The hypotenuse B is 2S. The shorter leg across from 30 degrees is S, and that means the third side is S radical 3. And we ask ourselves, what are we given? Well, it's a lucky day, because we are given what S is. S is 7. So we can easily find the other two by just multiplying. So to find 2S times by 2, so times 7 by 2, and 2s is 14. b is 2s, so b is 14. And now to find s radical 3, again, start with s equals to 7 and multiply it by radical 3, which I means I multiply 7 by radical 3. s radical 3 equals 7 radical 3, and that means that d is 7 radical 3. And there are the values of the four variables in this problem. So in a complicated problem like this, just break it down, breathe, and you can do it. I promise. All right, four. This is that conveyor belt problem. There's a very good reason why I'm showing this problem again. So it says, a farmer's conveyor belt carries bales of hay from the grounds of the barn loft. The conveyor belt moves at 100 feet per minute. And remember... That is a rate, or a speed. How many seconds does it take for the bale of hay to go from the ground to the barn loft? Okay, so what we need to use here in the end is uh, rate times time equals distance. They give you the rate of 100 feet per minute. You are looking for the time, so we need to find the distance. And the distance is here on the hypotenuse of this 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right. Now I'm going to uh, label it up here on the picture. So across the right angle, this is your 2S. Across from the 30 degree angle, this is S. And then down here at the bottom, across from 60, the third side is S radical 3. So we are given S. S is 12. And again, I like that. Because if S is 12, I can easily find the other two sides to find this distance D, which is 2S, multiplied by 2. And S is 24. That means that D is 24 feet. And that is what I need to put over here in this formula. So to use this formula, the rate is 100, your time is what you're looking for, and the distance is 24. And to get t by itself, we divide by 100. 24 divided by 100 is 0.24. But that is in minutes. They want to convert minutes to seconds. 
One minute is 60 seconds. So to convert minutes to seconds, big to small, we multiply times by times by 0.24. 60 times 0.24 is 14.4, and that is the number of seconds, sorry, seconds, that it takes for a bailiff to get from the bottom of that conveyor belt to the top. All right. So this is a 30-60-90 triangle uh, with a Physical science, rate times time equals distance kind of idea. All right, just an uh, application of perfect, or uh, not perfect, of special right triangles. And our last two are word problems, and I didn't do any questions from 8.3 uh, because 8.4 uh, eight covers the trigonometry, so you're just going to do word problems. Uh, a meteorologist measures the angle of elevation of a weather balloon as 41 degrees. A radio signal from the balloon indicates that it is 1,503 meters from his location to the nearest meter. How high above the ground is the balloon? Okay, draw a picture. Here's the meteorologist on the ground. Here's the balloon up in the air. Okay, So he says the angle of elevation is 41 degrees. That is made by a horizontal call at the ground and a line of sight. Now be careful if they give you a height of the person. If they give you a height, they're going to want to do it from their eyes. But here we don't, so just do it from their feet. There's your line of sight. There's your 41 degree angle. It says a radio signal from the balloon. So this is emitting a radio signal back to the guy. Uh, indicates that it's 1,503 meters from him. So that means this diagonal, this hypotenuse, is 1,503 meters. And the question is, how high above the ground is the balloon? What is this vertical height called X? So uh, hopefully you see the right triangle, right? Right angle here. So there's a right triangle. Uh, 41 degrees is my angle. Label the three sides. The hypotenuse is here. The opposite is across from the 41 degrees, and the adjacent is next to the 41 degrees. Uh, I don't have any information about the adjacent, so I'm doing uh, opposite and hypotenuse. That is sine. So my trig equation, sine of an angle, sine of 41 degrees, equals opposite x over hypotenuse 1503. I multiply both sides by that denominator. And 1503 times the sine of 41 degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, is 986. And that is what X is, 986, and that's in meters. Make sure you label your answers with uh, units. Okay. Uh, let me go back to this problem fast, just to make a note. If the variable is in the denominator, remember it's two steps. Multiply by the variable, divide by the trig uh, expression, the trig function. Okay. And number six. It says the world's tallest unsupported flagpole is 282 feet tall. Um, it's in British Columbia. The shortest shadow cast by the pole during the year is 137 feet long. To the nearest degree, what is the angle of elevation of the sun when casting the flagpole's shortest shadow? So again, i got to draw a picture. Here's my flagpole. It's on the ground. And uh, it's 282 feet tall. And it casts a shadow. So my shadow is going to be here to the right. Here's the shadow. A little bit shorter, 137 feet. There's my shadow. And, and just to create the right triangle, I'm going to connect the flagpole to the end of the shadow. And if I were to keep going with this, the sun would be here. And they want to know what is the angle of elevation of the sun. What is this angle right there, x? So when you're finding angle measures, you need to use the important inverse trig ideas. Okay, so it's the same as problem five we just did, setting up the equation, but then you use an inverse rather than the actual uh, sine, cosine, or tangent function. So uh, again, uh, right triangle. Here is my angle. Label the three sides across the right angle is the hypotenuse, across from your angle is the opposite, and the third side is the adjacent. I have nothing about the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent is tangent. Tangent of x 
is equal to the opposite 282 over the adjacent 137. And now here's where you apply the inverse tangent. To get x away from this tangent, we use the inverse tangent. So we apply the inverse tangent to the left side, which cancels the tangent. And if you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side. So we apply the inverse tangent to the right side. Inverse tangent of 282 divided by 137. And now we type this out in our calculator. Inverse tangent. 232 divided by 137. Oh, 282. Sorry, 282. And we get an x value of roughly 64. It says nearest degree, 64 degrees. And that's the angle of elevation of the sun in this uh, shadow situation. All right. So make sure you study up. Know your note cards, right? A lot of memorization for this, this quest, but I expect a good grade if you put the effort in. All right, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you on Thursday or Friday.